If you want to write a book and become a best-selling author, you're in the right place. At Elite Online Publishing, we can help you create, publish, and market your book so that it becomes a number one bestseller. We work with a limited number of authors to ensure that they receive the best possible service. So if you want to learn how to write and publish a book that will empower you to smartly grow your brand, business, and credibility, apply today. We look forward to working with you. Hey everyone, it's Melanie. Welcome back. We have another great session here. We are with one of my new favorite people, George Shepard. And I'm just telling you, we are going to learn how to blow it up, to blow your book launch up with the summit and how a summit can blow up your book using both tools either way. So I'm really excited to dive deep into this. George, thanks for coming today. Yeah, this is going to be great. Like we had a brief discussion before about like how authors can use virtual online events, multi-speaker events to not just establish their brand and just completely be, go from zero to hero in some cases because like who am I to you know really making a big mark and creating an impact along with a tribe and there's some really cool secrets that I'm going to share because I have data on working with the, with authors to launch their books and also facilitate additional book sales through Summit. So I'm really excited to unpack that for everyone. And I just want to tell you, I think this is like a new deep, dark secret that nobody has really undercovered or knows about. So it's so effective. So I'm really excited to unpack all this information. But before we get started, I just want a little history about you and how you got started in this business, just to take us on that journey. And then we'll get all the deep information. All right. So much like a lot of people, you know, we started a long time ago in the space before it was where it is right now, but we didn't start out with doing summits, although the first event that I did, the first launch that I had online was actually a virtual event. It was a summit. We interviewed about, I think, 20 or so really famous drummers. And it was kind of fun because I got to meet my heroes and talk about like really make some connections. So it helped me kind of get my name out there and get on the map in that space. But since then, I launched multiple books. I've launched magazines. We launched our first magazine was a drum magazine. And then we went into doing like a survival magazine and then political magazine. We did all kinds of really fun stuff in the print space. And about, I think maybe seven or eight years ago, I started seeing a shift in the print magazine business. But we, you know, before the whole COVID debacle when lockdowns and this happened, we started moving towards a different medium, which was more video and more audio. So I re like revisited my roots of where we said like, how do, where do we make the most money with the least amount of work with the most impact? And it always came in back to like doing these virtual events. So we set aside our print publishing side of the business for magazines and we moved more into digital media. And since then, we've been able to grow to, I think, probably the second largest online event producer for doing virtual summits. And we've done well over 100 summits. And we've been doing that since 2000 and I don't know if it was 2000 or 2001. It was right around that time. Right around the December time was when I actually started launching you know, some of these parts of the business. So it's been a really long time. And, and I'm really excited to, to share what we've learned over 20 years doing this. And I have to say, being a participant and going through the process, I really love your process and the hand holding along the way. And you think you're not going to make it, but George has got you and his team has got you through the whole process. All right. So let's say I come to you and I say, listen, I'm working with Elite Online Publishing and I'm going to be publishing my book. And I want to see what you can do for me during the book launch. So number one, like what, what would be the process and what is the advantage of doing it? a summit with my book launch. Yes, there's the there's so launch. many. I mean, it's almost kind of like, where do I start? I mean, let me, so let me do this. Let's kind of unpack a few things and we can maybe go a little bit deeper, you know, into what some of that means. And like, I'll give you specific tactics and strategies that, that people can use. First off, instant credibility, because if you have peers in your space, there are people that you will never get on the phone unless you pay them $20,000 or more or donate like a crazy amount of money to their charity. Then they'll get on the phone with you. But this is a great way to get people on the phone to start picking their brain to help them get you know, some more exposure. And it's just a really great way of having penetration to market where it's almost kind of like coming in the side door where everyone else is rushing to the front door trying to get a meeting with people. You're kind of coming in the side door, you know, giving someone a fist bump and you're in because that's the whole fist bump of the summit, like the secret world of the summit to host. So that's a really big part and component of doing summits. But another component is you're building out a tribe of people who actually love you. Building a really strong email list is a key. Like do, most people who do summits, if anyone's maybe listening that's done a multi-speaker summit, most summits are, it's rare to break between 200 and 1,000 people to attend your mm -hmm. virtual event. Ours on average are about 10,000 people or more. I say on average because a lot of our summits do more like 25,000, 40,000 people. And there's a magic to that. There's a process that I can unpack some of that today too, just so that if anyone's thinking about doing this, 
whether it's working with someone like myself or on your own, I can give you some tips so you get a better turnout. On top of that, you can create a product out of a summit. So that means if you want to have something that you can sell, a course, it could even be a book. We talked a little bit about doing a compilation yeah. book, which is really neat that you can do that from. And not just that, but you can also add your book to part of the funnel. And there's a special part, like you never want to add your book as an upsell. We won't go too in, much in depth on the funnels just at the moment, yeah. but, but we will probably hopefully unpack that a little more. But an upsell really should be something that's going to add speeder automation to the problem that you're solving mm. for people on a multi-speaker event. So for example, when we do a book, we add a book to the funnel itself, we make it an order bump. And those are the little check boxes that you put that when someone's you know, buying the summit recordings, for example, what we call our VIP all access pass, they're buying that, they'll check that box. They do, I want to add the book to my order. And that could be an ebook. It can be a physical book. It could be also audio, or maybe it could be all three, you know, for 20 bucks. Yeah. And that helps add the, increases the card value. So it helps you back out your advertising costs, your lead costs. And you'll love this 28 to 32% conversion rate. That means 28 to 32% of the people who buy your program will also add that. Just check the box and add that to your order. It's really easy. Nine bucks is really an easy number. 19 bucks. When you start getting more than $19, it starts to, people have to start thinking about it when it's a book coming off of a, a summit that might be say a 37 to $47 price. You want it to be a little bit less than people can add that. A course is great order bump too. So if you have a course, you can do that. The courses are best saved for like uh, upsells. Cause you're adding, like you just, you're poking the pain with the summit. Like here's the problems. Here's, it's not okay to stay where you're at. And then we're going to help you solve that by helping you get there faster or with least amount of work. So if you have like templates or you're going to unpack a step-by-step -step process to get the, that result that they're looking for, you can do that in a course much more effectively. And that's going to be a one-click upsell. And maybe we'll talk a little about technology and like how you make that work. It's pretty easy. I don't want really to be like tech scared about this talk. We've done lots of stuff. One thing too, that you mentioned, I didn't get a chance to unpack is it's the pain point. So mm -hmm. all books, in my opinion, all summits, everything, all live events are built around a single pain point. It's really hard to come out and do something so broad, like the women's summit or the men's summit. It's like, okay, what's the, I'm a man. Oh, I'm in such pain. I'm a man. Why? It's, it's not, that's not the key, right? The key is like, what is the pain that we're solving for those people? So if you can do, you know, like, let's imagine this be concentric rings. You might say there's a broader audience. There's more people that can buy it, but the problem is their pain's not strong enough for them to move the needle to say, I need that. There's not enough reason for them to take action. So you can come in on that concentric circle and say, okay, women in business summit. Okay. So it's only going for women in business, you know, or moms, right? Mm -hmm. Say we go a little bit closer to that. So maybe it's more specific, you know, so it could be women who are, of a, well, I'm trying to think of a specific industry. Like here's a good example. We did an essential oil summit for people who are in the business of selling essential oils. Now, granted, that's about 90% women, 85% women, very successful event that we did. And what it did was it generated a large list of people who are in that space that are in the business of selling essential oils. So for example, if you have a protocol for how to sell, like if you have a, like if you have a sales course, and it doesn't have to be essential oils specific, right? Think about what else are they buying? So if, you're, if you want to teach people how to sell something, you're trying to get those people on your list or do your book launch on like 17 ways you can sell obscure products, you know, to the masses or, you know, whatever, maybe seven closing yeah. techniques, that's your book or something. What are the different micro segments that you can do an event for? Now, granted, we didn't do, I think we had 7,500 people or something attend that event. It wasn't our, one of our 10,000 people events, but we did $150,000 in sales from that, from just the summit. Wow. You know, at a hundred bucks. So there was a lot of people that were engaged. We sold well over a thousand VIP passes. They're like, yeah, I want this. You know, so it's, you can make a lot of money with the summit. You can build a really strong tribe, but you can also create back-end programs, which we just, for that one, we just really didn't. I launched a course later on that we, we did. We, I think we made an extra $50,000 or something that on. It was on how to automate your business, how to automate your essential oil business, but it could have been applied to anything. So you want to think about what's the big pain point that you're solving? What's the pain point your book solves? And then the summit itself brings, it brings the experts to the stage to say, you know, it's, here's the pains. We're going to unpack the pain a little bit deeper. Here's how bad it could get. And here's mm -hmm. some solutions. If you want to do it on your own, you have to make sure that your summits are solution-based. Mm -hmm. And then that allows your course because the summit solution-based people want to buy the recordings because they want to start getting those solutions into place. So uh, it's almost a recipe for success. Then your courses and, or your book even can help them get there faster. I was a really long answer, but I wanted to kind of, <laughs> answer that in totality so that everyone's kind of getting, start getting the juices flowing, like start thinking like how actually can I help solve people's problems by using this? 
And you know what I like about that too. So some pe people who come into our ecosystem are like, okay, I have my book and then it launches and then the, then what, right? So you're forcing them through that process of coming up with products, coming up with the PDFs, coming up with bonuses, coming up with all these things. So they have a back end for their book, even before their book launches. So right. instead of just like launch the book and now what, and then you're chasing your tail. If you have that all done ahead of time and you're working on the summit while you're working on the book and it's all coming together at the same time, you're going to have this huge list of 10,000 plus people that maybe you didn't have before that you're reaching out to, plus all the different experts and connections you're going to have that maybe you wanted to connect for your business that you were using your book for and all the exposure your book's going to get in the meantime, because the summit's going to be the name of your book most likely. And, and then you're diving into it's so much deeper than what you were in your book. It's a whole nother deeper layer that they're getting and you have it for perpetuity. So walk us through a little bit, like if, you know, I've got this now, I'm going to do this, do the summit. And I know it can be overwhelming if they're doing both things at one time. What is the, I've done the summit now, what's the back end of that? And how does that look at it? And how do I continue to leverage that? Okay, I'm trying to think of which part of the question I want to start first with. Yeah. <laughs> so owning the list is the most, why is Facebook worth billions? Mm -hmm. It's not because Facebook is like, oh, this technology is so amazing. You know, there's so many social media platforms out there. It's because they have a list, they have a tribe and people want to spend money to advertise to reach that tribe. You know, some people will argue it's because they know everything about you. You know, it's their data set that, that they own. But again, that's still the thing. It's they have a relationship with that tribe. People hang out on Facebook. If you own the email list, that is, and it's going to sound bad, it's an ATM machine. Okay, so if you want to launch a program, you have a tribe that's like eagerly waiting for their next thing. So it's great for, especially like serial publishers or serial authors who want to recreate a series of books. It doesn't have to be a series of books. It'd be like a workbook. It could be mm -hmm. a main book. It could be like Girl, Wash Your Face, right? And then Girl, Wash Your Face for Teens. And then Girl, Wash Other Parts of Your Body, Not Just Your Face, <laughs> That's probably wrong, but you know, those kind of ideas, yeah, well, like that's probably very wrong on a lot of levels. <laughs> we're, just, we're not responsible for that. That's all George. <laughs> right. Cut that out of the, yeah. so the idea is like, you can create a whole serial business around, around that main pain point from, you know, from the different summit things. It's kind of like you're saying you've got a whole series, but now you've got this asset of all these interviews, mm -hmm. everything that you can use that for. And we're even saying you can rerun the summit again. You can take the separate interviews and run them, yep. post them on social media, each individually, if you want. So you're creating, so like, we're going to have, I don't know, 30 plus interviews here that I can run each one of those separately if I want. And if it's based off of your book, then you've got all this additional content. And like you say, every time you run one of those, you can tag the person that you interviewed. And if they have a big social media following, then all of a sudden you're creating, you're getting their followers to follow you by doing that. Right. You yeah, actually, let's unpack your experience a little bit, because this is, a, there's a byproduct from doing a summit, at least the way that we do them, because the majority mm -hmm. of people don't have those kind of results that we have, like. Our average summit's 10,000 plus people. It's just people don't really see that. Most of the time, it's much lower than that. When we go through the copy process, like before we ever pick a speaker, some people say, I'm going to make a list of all these speakers that I want to work with. That's one way of doing it. But you need to really get inside that mind of the avatar, meet them where they're already at and in the conversations that they're already having with themselves. So when we go through the copy, we're writing content, we're creating titles for the summit. And a lot of those titles, as we talked about, and you saw them, I mean, yeah. they're the perfect title for books. They're chapter title, the questions that you would ask a summit speaker, you know, that you're interviewing, those are chapter titles in your book. Every yeah. single summit topic can be a whole book on its own. And it gives you so many creative ideas. Like what was your experience when we went through that process? Okay. So I don't want to use the word painful, but I will use it <laughs> as growing. It was a growing experience. So what I want to say is it's like, you're creating this, you're going through this process with Georgian 360, but doing the process, it's like you're in a business seminar and they're asking you, well, who's your avatar? What's the most pain point that they have? What do they look like? What do they sound like? What are the questions they're asking? What are the result, results they want? And if you haven't answered these questions for your business, he's making you put your feet to the fire and answer these questions. But I will say, it's not like you're racking your head for it. He's got a whole team of people that are helping you come up with these questions and brainstorming and all this stuff. So you walk out, not just with a summit, like just what we've done so far, you have all this new business information that you've piled into your business and aha discoveries that you've made along the way through the process, which I find so cool. That's going to exponentially 
drive your business forward just by having that knowledge and going through the process and asking those questions and mm -hmm. getting the right answers and having experts with you. You're not in a vacuum with just you or your team trying to answer it because sometimes you're just too close to your product to come up with those pain points versus someone outside going, well, if I was doing this and never did it, this is what I would ask. This is what my pain point would be. So it's really helpful. Yeah. The first step, I'm just going to, I'll share this with everyone. So write this down. This is super important. Take out a sheet of paper and write out 40, one to two, or maybe three word phrases that really identifies the pain, the fear, the frustration, the hope, or the dream that someone has. Like, for example, if someone is, I'm going to take a very broad example. Let's take weight loss, for example. Let's say we're going to do a weight loss summit or a book series about like losing weight. Maybe you have a unique way mm -hmm. of doing that, right? How to sleep pounds away. Like, who doesn't want to do that? You go to sleep, wake up 10 pounds lighter, yeah. right? What's the big pain point that they have? The deep emotional pain point. First is, why will this work? You know, what's different about this? Like, how do I, what are foods that I can eat? And that I love to eat, but that, you know, that won't cause me to gain weight, right? What's going on with my metabolism? You know, am I too old to lose weight? Am I too young? How do, will losing weight affect my skin? Like, is the keto diet real? You know, like, what are all the things that people will start thinking of? And we can go into a deeper emotional thing. Like, how do I, I don't feel beautiful, right? I don't feel worthy. You know, I don't feel successful because of their, maybe they have food addictions, you know, how do I stop eating certain foods? You know, maybe cer certain amounts of foods or whatever those things might be. There's a lot of things to unpack, which are pains, fears, frustrations, hopes, and dreams. The hopes and dreams, like how, this is a good one, how to get into your skinny jeans, how to have a body that looks better than when you were 20. That's what they really want to know, right? Yeah. So, and it's different. One is the pain, right? And the other part is the hope that I'm going to get in my skinny jeans. Yeah, it's the outcome. Like if you can deliver the outcome to someone and make it believable, so like, oh, I see, this is why this works. And there's someone that's really great that I learned some things from, he might have learned it from somebody else, like Todd Brown, this guy, a really smart marketer. He calls it the unique mechanism. Why will uh -huh. this thing work when everything else they've tried hasn't? So if you're in a market that there's, it's very heavily, it's competitive. There's a lot of people that are in that market. Sales is one of those markets. There's a lot of, you know, business in general is one of those markets. What is your unique mechanism that's going to help you you take them to that next level. Sometimes you can create like a, an acronym or a word that kind of makes them feel mm -hmm. interesting that the, one of the ways I've heard that talked about from another person, John Benson, who does copywriting, he says Beachwood aged all the time. He said before Beachwood, and you say that word, people know what that means. It's Budweiser, right? Everyone's seen the yeah. commercials probably Beachwood aged. Well, most beers are Beachwood aged. They just don't call it Beachwood aged. You know, or there's a different way yeah. of aging it, right? It's using yeah. hops or whatever else. You got to find that unique mechanism and name it something. And that's what makes your product unique. So keeping that in mind, that's where you're ultimately leading them to a single decision through your summit that the only logical solution is to buy your product, to buy mm -hmm. your book, to buy your course. So when you organize those pains, fears, and frustrations, you're taking them on a journey. It's a multi, it's a course that's taught by the industry leaders in the space who they already know, like, and trust. And you're able to leverage that likability, that trust, and that authority, because you're the one interviewing them. You're the one that's connecting, you know, you're curating that experience. And that ultimately leads to you being seen as super credible and people create a genuine reciprocity for you. So when you say, Hey, you know, we got the summit, the recording package, it's only available for a certain period of time. Can you, know, you might want to buy it now. So you don't miss out. They'll appreciate what you've given them for free. Cause there's a whole <laughs> model to that, by giving it for free, which people will be like, what you're giving your summits away for free. It's hundred percent free. Mm -hmm. But if you want to buy the recordings, that's how we do it. We see a bigger conversion rate four to five times more people buy our summits than buy everyone else's summit just wow. because of the process we go through it really really high conversion rates and i've seen someone do that in the past for a cookbook series for a recipe mm -hmm. book series someone's in a mastermind with me and they launched their documentary along with a recipe book and they gave the whole dang thing away for free and we're all thinking you're crazy this is years ago and they made something like 1.7, $1.5 million off that launch and launched it again after that. I mean, talk about selling in a crazy 23,000 books or some crazy number like that. They sold a lot. And so you could do the same thing. You can have that type of success with your own book launch. If you just know the mechanisms to attach to it, like doing a virtual event. And the virtual event doesn't have to be 30 people. It could be eight people. It could be eight mm -hmm. industry leaders. You want to, The key to making a virtual event work is having people who have a list and have a following. Between you and me, social media, I don't care if you have a million people on social media. It's not worth it. It's worth 1% to 
of whatever the following is because you have to pay to reach those people. If you post something on social media in like 99% of the time, you've got, no one's going to see it. Only the people who are the most active and engaged in your social media, which might be, yeah. you know, 500 people, a thousand, there's only people who are going to see it. You know, if you have like a million people or even a hundred thousand people that yeah. are on your, you know, Facebook friends or, you know, social media, Instagram following, you want to find people who have email lists because you're taking them from one platform to another. It's mm -hmm. the same thing as saying, Hey guys, go buy my book to people who don't read books. You think yep. that they're going to actually buy your book? Probably not. Right. But if they consume audio content and you say, buy my audio book and their podcast, avid podcast listeners, or some of the people, right. They listen to content. Yep they're more likely to buy it. So that's a great way of packaging your book. And one more thing you can also, when we talked before about adding your book on as a bump, you know, mm -hmm. order bump, you could take the exact opposite and add the summit or content series on as a bump to increase the value of your book. So it could be within the first, like one of the uh -huh. hacks we use for Amazon is one of the first three or four pages of the book on the cover will say, comes with this extra bonus audio, maybe it's the audio book. Right. Or some sort of an audio series or three, you know, interviews or 10 interviews, whatever. Yeah. That's a bonus. But we make the opt-in link inside the first few pages because Amazon has this whole like look inside feature. People yeah. will sometimes go click on that and like, oh, I just found some secret thing. They didn't know uh, they didn't know that you know their stuff is available. They go opt in, they just got on your list. What do you think you're gonna sell them? You're gonna sell them your book <laughs> and whatever else you got. All right. That makes me think about, you know, the future of publishing, which is what we're talking about. So think about if you set your book up as an NFT, a non-fungible token, and you sell it and part of the back end of the smart contract comes with the summit. Yeah. So you're That's now hot. like, okay, you're going to get my, the first hundred people that buy the book, get the summit for free, along with maybe another bag of goodies that you're going to have. That's but how great. cool is that? Yeah. And it's only available to the buyers of the book or right. the NFT in this case. Right. Right. And these could be secret interviews that are not mm -hmm. going to end up on YouTube. We're talking about the hardcore stuff. And you might even like just dangle the carrot a little bit by saying, here are some of the questions. And they could be some heavy questions. Like we did a Healthy yeah. Vibrant Women Summit. And it's, I love the content of the summit because our, our summit host, Dr. Lisa O, she asked questions that are fly on the wall questions. That no one wants to come out and answer in a form. No one wants to come out and ask, right? Because they might be ridiculed, but she asked the question. Yeah. And, you know, those are the ones that people really want. Like, what's mm -hmm. the deep, remember we talked about the deep pain, the fear, the frustration. Yeah. What's the deep emotional thing that people want to know that no one's, what, what's the thing that people don't want to talk about? Those are the things that people will buy because that now you can bake those into bonuses for your books. You know, obviously the summit, I don't want to get too far off the summit topic, but yeah. those could be the interviews that you're doing with people. And you could turn those into summits and you can get a lot of people who'll be like, wow. And of course you can do summits around somewhat controversial topics, you know, too. Like I'm trying to think something that's controversial. I mean, we can go, pol anything political yeah. is controversial, right? Well, and even you can take, like you're saying, well, my book is overwhelming. I don't want to do it in my whole book. You could just pick one chapter of your book, mm -hmm. do a summit on, and just True. focus, and dive deep into that vertical of what that chapter is. We recently saw Stedman Graham speak. He's Oprah's boyfriend. And he is his speak. We always say your book is your speech and your speech is your book. And literally his speech was just off of the one chapter from his book. And he spoke for about 45 minutes only on the one chapter of his book. So you can do the same thing with a summit of bringing people in, you know, you can have your own segment, but bring other people in that dive deep into that with you. And we're saying, how do you get it paid for ahead of time, which I think is a great strategy. You're interviewing these people and you're having chat beforehand. Maybe you're even a business deal comes out before the summit even launches or your book launches. And then you've paid for everything ahead of time. Yeah, you know, something else you mentioned that just kind of like popped in my head when you started talking about a chapter of your book. I was just thinking if you did a summit prior to like finishing your book or launching your book, because you might still be in the outline process, but you're like, mm -hmm. I'm going to do a book. I'm committing to do a yeah. book. You know, I'm trying to get some ideas. Like what's the big pain points that people are feeling? If you go through the process of doing a summit, you can take all of that content. Like you don't want to plagiarize, right? Like call someone else's content your own, you know, as right. far as, but you can get some amazing ideas of what the real big pains are from that, doing that, some, even just doing the copy process that we go through, like yeah. just taking that process alone, like there, there's content for days. We have a roughly 20 or 30 speakers that we have on a summit and they're all specifically mm -hmm. geared towards answering a question that someone has in their mind. Those are all separate books, you know, like we talked about earlier, but they can also be one yeah. cohesive book on the topic. 
multiple chapters. They could be a series of books. You can take the first yeah. six, that your first six chapters, you can take the next six and the next six, you can, mm-hmm. or even seven, probably don't want to have six, six, six. That sounds bad, right? So yeah. seven, 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 let's go with Vegas <laughs> terms, right? Um, cha-ching. That's, you can use that too as a way to get some ideas. And even going to, if you're looking for ideas, go to people who are doing summits in the past. Mm-hmm. Take a look at some people's summits and get some ideas for some of your book chapters. That's probably a really great way to yeah. come up with additional content ideas. Because mm-hmm. if they follow, at least if they followed our process, there then that's what people really want to know. Sometimes summit talk titles can be a little nebulous. Like, what does that mean? I, you know, we try to make it really clear, like what that means, what the pain and the outcome. You know, in the same title, if not, uh, we take them through that journey. So look for that type of thing, in general. Yeah. That's a great idea. So is there anything that I haven't asked you that I should have asked you about what an author should do in participating in a summit? Or yeah, summit maybe. In yeah, that's actually a good question. Let's do this. There's two parts I think that we want to ask. Not very, many, not very many people ask these two questions. First question is, walk me through what the logistics of doing a summit look like. So like, it sounds great. I'm sold. But yeah, is this going to, am I committing like a year of my life or 10 years of my life to this thing? So walking through those logistics on the side of being a host and then I'm going to say, well, let's walk through the logistics on the side of being a speaker, because I think being a speaker on other people's summits is crazy awesome if you know how to leverage it. So we can talk about how you can leverage that even and yeah. create an hey, that's ecosystem. Great. That's great for an author too. Don't just have your own summit, be a speaker on as many summits as you can. Yeah. This whole idea of I need to be paid to speak blows my mind because if you know what you're doing and you have a back-end program, you can make, it's you know one in the hand, two in the bush. You can make 10 yeah. times or you know, in this case, two in the bush, two times much money, then you'd be paying for speaking by just speaking on events, like just doing it the right way and knowing how to you know, create an ecosystem that really supports your work and supports your mission in life. So let's unpack the, let's unpack the speaker side first, since we're already talking about that right now. Yeah. So what are the ways to get the most out of being a speaker on a summit? First off, you want to make sure that you have a really strong bonus. And those bonuses a chapter of your book is not a bonus. Let me just say that right now. That's a weak bonus. It's so that's so weak. It just it's almost give us something that's good. It could be an old book. It could be a report. It could be a workbook. Here, think about this one. A workbook that's based on your main book, which means you're giving people the workbook, but they really need to get the value out of it. They need to buy your book. You're giving that away as a free bonus. Like that's keep that in mind. Like we're trying to add speed or automation, get them to buy your stuff. You can give a full course away. Giving away a discount to your personal coaching is not a good bonus. Like, yeah. come on, that's, you're not giving someone anything for free. They got to pay for it, right? They don't get on the giveaway a strategy call. That's a little bit better, right? Especially if that strategy call guarantees an outcome. Like a strategy call that guarantees you will be, you will find out the reason why your metabolism has slowed to a certain number or how to speed up. Like by the end of our call, you'll not just identify this, but the four foods or the foods that are actually keeping you back from healthy, being healthy, whatever the scenario, but if it's health yeah. and wellness, like what those things are. So you have to be, your bonus needs to guarantee an outcome that they're looking for. It could be also a simple checklist. One of our, like, you'll love this. I don't know if I've ever told you this, Melanie. One of our best-selling books of all time, and I've written over a hundred books, which we didn't unpack that either, is 101 Secret Hiding Places. It's literally a list of 101 secret places to hide stuff. (laughs) That's it. No pictures, a list of 100 places to hide stuff. Not necessarily a book, but it's, I put it up on Amazon. It sells like every day. And you know what? It, the great, I mean, I'm not even doing as much as I should be doing with that book. It was a test and it was, it's been up there for years and it's, it still just keeps selling. I did like literally no promotion for it at all. You know, but those are some of the things that you can think about, like what supports, you know, if I had a, the spy store, right. If that was my whole thing, like spy techniques for, you know, yeah. spying on people or whatever, I don't know. If the book is like secret hiding places, that supports my mission. I can always say, you know, find you know, ways of spying on, you know, nanny spying or finding ways of making sure that people don't, yeah, you know, the cameras and stuff. Like you can have those opt ins in that book, which I didn't do anything like that because that's not the business that I'm in. It was just finding places to hide stuff that you don't get ripped off. You know, it was in the, that yeah. was for my survival part of my business. We have survival and preparedness part of our business. Okay. So that's that's one of the ways that you can leverage that. So having a really strong bonus. And another way is to just do it, just do the interview. The more, if you're not appearing, you're disappearing. That's the way that I look at this. And right now there's so many people that are waiting in line behind you, waiting to eat your lunch, that it is, it's more important than ever to be visible and be, yeah, be relevant because the moment that you're not visible, you're also not relevant. And that's a term that's been used a lot with millennials and the newer generation that are coming Mm -hmm. out. You just, you got to be relevant. You got to talk, you got to talk to the pain people are in right now and don't talk anymore. 
than what they need to learn to get into action. That's all they're looking for. That's why YouTube has become like one of the biggest search engines on the internet. Yeah. I don't go to Google and look for stuff anymore. You know, I look for, I look on Amazon or I look on YouTube. If it's how to, I look on YouTube. If I look for, I want to buy a product, it's on Amazon before I ever go to Google to do a search. Right, so that's a really good point. So if you don't have a book on Amazon and your name's not on Amazon, if they're searching for you, then they're not going to find you. And yeah. the thing sometimes that people don't realize you get this Amazon author page that you can have eight videos, eight photographs. You can have your blog post or podcast feed in there and your whole bio with all your social media links. And then Amazon's working for you. So like you're saying, well, I'm going to Amazon. And that's when I interview someone on our podcast. It's one of the first places I go because if they have an Amazon author page, I have all the content that I need to start the interview and know what they're about. Exactly. So now let's unpack the other side of it, okay? Which is what happens when you're a host? So the biggest benefit you're gonna get is being a host. And it's, it's, it might sound a little self-serving, but whether you work with me or you try it on your own, or maybe that you find someone else who's done summits and then you feel really confident that they can pull it off. I think every author should do their own event. And I'm saying, stay away from live events. You can do live events. You can actually make some pretty good money, but it is really risky. And especially right now, I mean, you don't, how many people called me when lockdown happened saying we, we've rented out this convention center. They're not giving our money back. Can you help me launch my event because I'm under water, like hundred thousand dollars and people want their money back. And I don't, I have to produce something. It's a risky proposition because it's, you know, it's not subject to you actually producing the event It's subject to that event actually being able to happen. And who knows where we're at right now with I mean, lockdowns happening all the time in different places. Yeah. So getting back to, you know, why it's so beneficial to be the summit host is first off, you get to curate the event. It is your brainchild, just like your book, losing creative control over your book is the scariest thing for an author when you get a big publishing deal because up oh, they're going to cut this they're going to cut this and when you finally get the thing back it's not even your story and that, I would say that's probably one of the top three or four things that people worry about that's what I worry yeah. about that's mm -hmm. why we got into self publishing right or you, we work with someone like Elite who like gets it who they get the vision so that's one thing we want to make sure that we keep that cohesive like what's the outcome we want for people mm -hmm. so you get to keep that you get to also figure out who you're going to interview. This is the way for you to interview your heroes. Remember I mentioned in the very beginning, I got to interview all my drum heroes. You know, it was fun. It was totally fun. And this is a way for you to get known in that space. You become an instant authority. Like literally it's, people say that there's no overnight success. This is the closest to overnight success that anyone will ever see. Mm -hmm. Unless you launch your business on the stock exchange and all of a sudden you're a millionaire overnight because you did an IPO. That, that's yeah. even crazy rare, <laughs> you know, for you to do that. But this is easy. This is within everyone's reach because you have that ability. Plus you get the list. We have a, our, the model that we use is a bit different. We don't run the agency model where you can just hire us and we'll just produce your summit. That I don't usually like that because it feels a little bit kind of like you become a doormat. Anyone who's in the agency space, the service providers, you become a doormat for people really fast because they almost kind of feel like I paid you money. We own you kind of thing. That's a scary place to be. It's not very fulfilling for me. So what mm -hmm. we decided to do is we do a partnering model. We actually do a ref share of all of our summit hosts. We find the right summits. We work with people to make sure that, that summit's actually going to make money and going to hit the, the goals that they have. So we have a, a, an interview process we go through first. And then we go through, that's why we spend so much time on the content and the copy early because we need to guarantee it's going to be successful. Otherwise we're all yeah. losing money. We need to have enough skin in the game. So that's a bit of a difference in the model that we take. We're in it, like we lock arms with the people we work with and we go out and we launch the summit. We relaunch the summit. We have whole processes of building backends. We set up membership sites for people if they need them, no additional cost. Cause again, we're in this thing together. So yeah. Because we do that, you get a copy of the list. You also get a copy of the summit. So we make it super easy to disconnect, just as easy as it is to connect with us, which means if we find out we're not a good team working together, we want to make it just as easy for you to go out and prosper on your own. Mm -hmm. Take the summit content. We just you know don't give it away for free because then it's not cool for yeah. the people who paid for it. But you can use, you can leverage the content in your books. You can leverage the content in your membership areas, like all the things that you can do. Like you can really do some amazing things to create an online business that generates money while you sleep from the back end of a summit. And it's not just the credibility. It's not just making money and building a list. It's also, what are the other things? Like launching your online programs, launching your mm -hmm. courses. If you have a high ticket program or some sort of a coaching program where you work with people one-on-one, -on -one, it's hands down the best way to create a list and monetize that list immediately from the summit, like with one-click upsells and everything else. Yeah. So if you're going to ask me, if I lost everything today, I would actually launch a summit with the people. You could put me in any niche and within... Three to six months, I will have a six-figure, if not seven-figure business off the back end of a summit when you do it the right way. You just have to be a little bit careful. There are a few people out there who are promising 
crazy things. There's one people that are there that I heard recently that they were offline producers of summit events. And then they got into that. Like all of a sudden they became an online summit producer. It's very different, you know, online events, offline events are very different. They became experts in it overnight, self-proclaimed. You got to be a little bit cautious. You need to ask people, have you done seven figure summits? If they're saying, I will sell you a program that guarantees you're going to do a seven figure summit or eight figures or six figures, make sure that they've done that before. Don't just take their word for it. Also, make sure that they've done enough summits successfully. Like mm -hmm. one of the things we don't do is we don't give out any of our, we don't do referrals. Like, like meaning like if someone comes to us and says, well, can I get some, can I talk to some people who work with you? Like, we just won't do it. If you're asking that question, you come to the wrong person. And it's not because we don't want people to talk about what we do because of the talking, all of our business comes from referrals. People just refer people over. We've got lots of business, but if you're listening, you're like, Hey, this makes a lot of sense. I want to work with you. Cool. We can talk, but you want to make sure that if you have to vibe with that person. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking for a company to work with, or if there's maybe an individual that says, I can help you with your summit. I've done summits in the past. First off, make sure they have a track record of success. Make sure that you also vibe with that person because there's nothing more unfulfilling than being in a bad relationship with someone like a bad publishing house, a bad, yeah. I mean, you know what we're talking about, Molly. I mean, this is, it's not fun. It's like pulling teeth, having conversations. And we, again, we try to really vet people that we work with first and say, do we get a good vibe from them? Do we think that they actually can fulfill yeah. on the promises that the summit's making and get the right speakers on board? But I love it. it summits are the thing. I would redo it. And it's, they're not dead. They're not overplayed. People still think that they're overplayed. We did three weeks ago, we did $300,000 on one of our recent summits in the health space, built a list of 39. It was like literally a few hundred people shy of 40,000 people that registered and attended the event. We built some sponsorships, major sponsorships, like 40,000 sponsorships. And I think there was something like 30, 27 or 30 people that were interviewed. They were the who's who in the space. So it can really put you on the map. It can do some amazing things. And I would say, if you have a limiting belief, just like doing your book, if you have a limiting belief, find someone who can, you can partner with from an accountability standpoint and just get over it, get over your limiting belief and just do it. It's the funnest thing you can do is to interview a bunch of your heroes or people that are really moving the needle, making impact in the world. I love it. I love the business that we're in. Yeah. You get such a thrill when it's all done and you can see the, I'm seeing the process now. I'm through the hard part. Now I'm having the fun part of interviewing everyone and seeing it all come together. All right. So the last question is, what do you think the future of publishing is? Okay. So this is one of the reasons why we pivoted. You know, we like the written word will never be replaced. Mm -hmm. You know, I have books on my shelf. I buy books regularly. I love the free plus shipping offers because I can get books for just the price of shipping. Even though they're, they're going to sell me something, they're probably going to be a sucker for it. It's fine. Yeah. But I, I still love the feel of paperback. Okay. There's, that's still something that I like. That's never going to go away. But the way that we consume content is going to change. You mentioned NFTs earlier. So just the fact that you know about NFTs, that you're working with a publisher. I mean, if you guys aren't working with Elite, you definitely should be working with Elite. The fact that they know about NFTs and they're working down that space, you should be definitely working with people that are on the future uh, line of that. Audio content, video content, digital content, and leveraging that content in different ways is the future of publishing. And people want quick wins. I don't know if I want to say this person's name because everyone on the call is probably going to know the publishing company. But what they said, one of this big publisher, I mean, say probably the top three publishers in the world. This is one of the guys. He told me personally, he said, the average person doesn't read past page 30 in a book. What they do is they read just enough to feel like they're getting a result. And they've kind of satiated that whole like, I don't know if it's endorphin rush or whatever. Like they just wanted that. I bought a book. Okay. I read yeah. something great. And then the problem never gets solved. The thing is you need to solve problems. You need to solve them fast. That means micro material, micro publishing, micro courses, even micro books. Our books, we saw this with digital magazines. People didn't read page past 30 or past page 30 a lot of times, even though the, book, the digital book would be you know, hundred pages. And it's not because the content wasn't good. It's because they got distracted. Our attention spans are this wide right now. Mm -hmm. So if you can create content that you can leverage into producing an outcome that people can see, and all of your content that you're creating for your publishing business leads them to either hiring you if you're a consultant or a service provider to help them solve their problem faster or more effectively, like with less time or yep. less money even, or it's going to lead them down a series of step-by-step -step processes because no one wants to be told, 
Like if I came out, and Melanie, we said, summits are awesome. You should do a summit. You can make a lot of money with some big, big less. Okay, great. Our talk is over with. That doesn't solve anyone's problem. Just say, okay, you know, unpack it for me. You might want to create micro series that where it will unpack one step at a time because people get overwhelmed so easily these days. And I think that is the golden opportunity is serial publishing, not just publishing one book, but publishing multiple books and multiple mediums of those books. So working with a publisher who can help you with multiple mediums of the books as well is really important, or at least they understand how to leverage your, make your book into a place where you can do that when the time comes, even if you want to use, because there's platforms that you just mentioned NFTs. No one has cracked that code yet. People are starting to use it, but no one's cracked it. So that's a whole nother medium that's just emerging at this point in time. In the metaverse, that's emerging right now. Like who knows what that's going to look like and how we're going to be consuming content in a virtual space with like, you know, 3D Oculus virtual reality oh, stuff. Yeah. That's going to be insane. Yeah. My sons are big. They just bought another virtual reality yesterday. I'm like, okay, didn't we just have one? Oh no, there's a newer one that's out. The Oculus, whatever it was. And yeah, you could consume a book that way. How cool would that be? Like you're reading the book and it's actually taking you into- a You're going thing. into Alice's garden. Instead yeah. of like reading about Alice's garden, you're in it. You're seeing it. You can interact with yeah. the plant life. You can interact with, you know, the Cheshire cat. Like we that's where that. the future's going to be. We did yeah. Van Gogh's 360. And part of it was a, a, v, a virtual reality part. And you were where his house was and you were walking down the street in the place where he painted the twilight painting and you could see the flowers. It was really, it was beautiful. Holy cow. So So it'll be that that type of thing that your book will become a virtual reality experience as well. Fiction and even nonfiction could be. Yeah, I I like that actually a lot. If you can think of your book as an experience and not a book, and it's not just a book anymore, it's an experience. And that, in the totality of that, whether Summit fits in it or not, or a virtual event, I personally believe any virtual event, masterclass, like multi-speaker events are great for a lot of reasons, but make your book launch, making it an experience and not just a book launch. You know, anyone can have a book launch, but not everyone can have a book experience. Transformational I love experience. That. I love that. So if you take nothing else away, make your book launch an experience and multimedia experience with the summit, with video, virtual reality, maybe an NFT, all this is coming forward. Make sure maybe you're even doing a book reading on YouTube with your book where you're reading a chapter or having them take action through it. So as many mediums as you can do it and make the whole thing an experience. That's going to be our new thing. Make your book launch an experience. So thanks, George, for coming. This has been awesome. I hope you got a lot out of this. I know I did. I was even taking notes as we were going on. So we'll see you. Thanks. (laughs) Thanks, Melanie. See you, everyone. If you want to write a book and become a best-selling author, you're in the right place. At Elite Online Publishing, we can help you create, publish, and market your book so that it becomes a number one bestseller. We work with a limited number of authors to ensure that they receive the best possible service. So if you want to learn how to write and publish a book that will empower you to smartly grow your brand, business, and credibility, apply today. We look forward to working with you.